Hey Daniel, it's a pleasure to have you here with us in Scala Days Berlin. Thanks, it's great to be here. Yeah, so you started your talk mentioning another one you gave in 2007. So basically you've continued, continued like eight years later, which is awesome. So what would it be for you the most important breakthroughs that have happened in the Scala language during that time regarding the Scala type system and maybe the shapeless framework? I think um, probably for the most part, the, the most important breakthroughs that have happened have been basically as a consequence of the community learning how to use what's already there. Um, you know, something that comes immediately to mind is uh, Paul Chisano uh, realizing that we could encode type lambdas in, in Scala using sort of, you know, structural types and, and type projection. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing in the Scala compiler that is, you know, designed to enable that feature in any way. It's, it's purely an accident of the implementation. Uh, but we discovered it. You know, it's been there all along, but we discovered it, and it's enabled us to write all of this great code. Um, I think in terms of, you know, changes of the, the language itself, Um, you know, sort of strangely, the, the most important change has really been uh, back in 2.8, uh, the addition of functional dependencies uh, in, in sort of the implicit resolution and type inference algorithm, which was necessary to support the Scala Collections Library back then. Um, you know, that, that one feature is really what fundamentally enables, you know, most of the type level computation that we do today with frameworks like Shapeless. Um, none of that would have been possible without that feature. And, and we're only today, you know, sort of realizing the power of it. Yeah. And we're hearing a lot about the new DOTI compiler and the inclusion of DOT calculus in the language. How do you think it will affect to the uh, Scala type system and the language itself in the near future? Um, in the near future, probably not very much noticeably. Um, I think, you know, the, the sort of the most obvious thing is that DOTI does remove a couple of features that, you know, aren't really on a firm, formal foundation. Uh, nothing that people would use in their everyday code, but, you know, stuff, you know, some frameworks are going to have to change a little bit. But I think it's more of a long-term thing, um, because having Dottie, at least mostly, on a, on a firm, formal foundation, uh, makes it possible to, to reason about the, the uh, language, makes it possible to reason about bugs in the language and fix them, uh, you know, sort of add new features to the type system and decide how they're going to interact. Um, you know, all of that stuff is much, much, much easier when you have a clear formal specification, a clear set of properties and proofs, um, as opposed to the current Scala compiler where, you know, more or less the implementation is the reference. And, and you know, it's, it's actually kind of hard to say entirely, you know, what does it mean? What does it have? Yeah. Um, thinking about the future, how would you like Scala to be in the next decade? And which features would you like to have in your toolbox? And how do you imagine the language by then? That's, that's a very interesting question. Um, because, I mean, Scala, Scala today has most of what I need um, to, to sort of be a very productive tool. Um, obviously, you know, I, I use a, a subset of Scala that's, you know, not the entire language is somewhat, somewhat different. I use a very functional subset of Scala. Um, but Scala is, you know, very capable of doing that. Um, I think that, you know, there's some quality of life, you know, sort of syntactic things that would be nice. Um, some of them are being addressed in Dottie, like, uh, you know, implicits being added to types and, you know, that being something that we saw in Martin's keynote. Um, you know, things like uh, ADT syntax, uh, which is something that Martin has talked about adding for Dottie and we'll, we'll you know, might make it in. Um, But I think, for the most part, those are just, you know, things I can live without, but they're, they're helpful. Uh, things that would be really, really helpful would be sort of better support for uh, uh, generalized ADTs, uh, GADTs, um, you know, and, and the existential types that go along with them. Uh, Scala already has sort of a really uniform encoding of, of GADTs and ADTs, which is very much unlike Haskell, where they're kind of two separate language features. Um, but I would like to see Scala sort of really flesh that out and make it uh, firmer and more stable. Right now it's quite buggy, it's, it's difficult to work with, um, but being able to have that as a, as a very first class solid language feature would allow us to really take things like free monads and you know, type line sequences basically to the next level. You know, uh, levels of abstraction that we can't do right now would become very, very easy and, and very elegant within Scala. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.